Now I'm gonna to try to put it back together and I will come back to let you know how that went. It's back together. It was not easy. You gotta be super patient putting it back together. Start from all the connectors on the right side, tuck the battery in, angling it to the right all the way in, but you wanna get all those connectors on this side plugged in and then move across to the left side and then maneuver this in. I did cheat in two ways. First thing I did is I removed this lower fan and connected it first and then reattached the fan to the housing. I only put two of the four screws back in. Anchor only put two screws in this fan, so I think two screws is fine to hold this one in. If you're able to get it back together in a way that's better than that, hats off to you. Oh, I'm sorry, I cut the zip tie first that held that wire that went to this fan. Thinking I could get more slack, it wasn't enough. So I had to remove this and then connect it and then put it back on again. And then I just worked very slowly across to getting all the connections made. Don't connect this connector until you are done. Everything is back in because this is power to the inverter. And if you accidentally energize the inverter, you could put your hand on top of this and get a pretty good shock. Just so you know, if you touch between line and neutral on this, it, it will give you a full on electric shock. Even though it's isolated from ground, the only thing you're protected from is touching line to earth because there is no reference to earth because this generates everything at a flowing reference. But it's back together. It is possible to take this apart without damaging it and to reassemble it without damaging it. And it is on right now. I'm gonna reassemble the back panel, which is pretty easy to do, and then come back and, and show you that Rem it's working. Quick reminder to anybody putting this back together. I had reattached this cable and I was like, okay, I'll put the back on. There are still four screws that need to be put back to hold this battery in. There are an additional four screws at the bottom that hold it in place, but you really want this battery fully secured in there. So I'm gonna get those four screws in, being super careful because this whole thing is now connected and they do a pretty good job of like, if you were to drop the screw in there, I mean, it, it just, it, it won't get around inside to the front. It, it won't on this side either, unless you really like lose it up toward the top. But you gotta be careful when you put those screws back in because they're pretty deeply in there and you wanna have like a magnetic screwdriver to hold that screw in. So I'm gonna do that now and then I'll come back and put the back panel on. Okay, I'm just wrapping up here. I've got this connector back in and it's threaded back through these little guides and we got the four screws in on each side for the battery on, on the front. And then the four screws on the bottom here are all back in place. And now I'm just gonna put this back where it was and put the 10 screws back into place. And I'll be back after that. Okay, here it is back together. I wanted to test everything before I put the back panels back on because these are really the hardest thing to get off. Uh, my phone charging, I got my laptop charging, just got some stuff plugged in over the AC inverter, running all my other computing stuff, and and then the car socket I haven't tested yet. But uh, yeah, just give me a second, I'll, I'll test it. All right, here we go. I got a little 12 volt kettle, it's, t it's about 10 amps, and it is now plugged in here as well. So we got about 60 watts coming from this. I'm not gonna max it out, I just wanna see it run. And then the phone's charging, laptop's charging, and then the kettle. So we're looking at about 161 watts. And then just to make sure that it charges, I'm gonna plug in a 65 watt adapter. That's what it comes with. We should see that drop down. It does. And if I just wanna test everything, I'll just unplug all the stuff, turn off the kettle, and we'll see if it's just charging at 60 watts. Should jump to this side, 60 watts. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Seems like I didn't mangle up anything too bad. Here are the casualties, uh, two screws and a zip tie that did not go back inside. But other than that, it's working working like a champ. Try to hear the fans come on. I do believe that I will find out the hard way if the fans don't work because they are pulse width modulated and they do have a feedback signal. So if they don't work when it needs them to, it will just stop or give me a warning or so. I don't know, it doesn't really have any warnings, it just has a hot or cold symbol, but it looks pretty good. I'll put the back panels back on now, they just snap back on, but I, but those were difficult to remove, so I wanted to test everything before I put those back on. It's been a trusty companion for two years. The, my only gripe with it was that this inverter is a 300 watts maximum. It has the electronic cutout fancy thing that they put in there. It's great. But if you accidentally plug in an inductive load into this or a capacitive load and try turning it on, it's trying to power the load. But 
fuses are all about the amount of current passing through them. So when this turns on, if it's massively out of phase, power factor of 0.3 or 0.4, maybe it's 300 watts, but it's like 900 VA or 1000 VA. This seems to not know, oh, that's bad. Stop right away. And it will try to run for a little bit and then stop. During that time, you're heating up that fuse a lot. And if you're like me and you keep trying to, I thought, ah, oh, maybe this time it'll start. Maybe this time it'll start. Because I thought really that it was 300 watts max, but it had a surge of like 600 watts. It doesn't. This is 300 watts max, 300 watts max. Maybe it goes to 310, 320. But I saw on the screen like 520, 525 watts. And I was like, cool, it'll start the refrigerator. And then it, I heard a little pop and that was that 40 amp fuse popping. Cause then this no longer worked. I mean, the button worked, it, it looked like it was turning on, but the inverter was just completely off. But it charged from DC, it charged and discharged from USB-C, the USB-A's worked and the 12 volt outlet wall worked. So I was like, uh, it seems like the fuse blew on the inverter. Yeah, I kind of wish Anchor would just do a resettable thing. I don't know if this manufacturer still does, but I've had Goal Zero products and this is like 10 years ago. I think it was the Sherpa 100. It had a little hatch. You had to remove a screw to get to it. There was the automotive fuse in there. If it overloaded and the unit didn't turn off in time, you could open a little hatch and then re remove and replace that fuse and then the unit would work again. It's a bummer that they don't do that, but I have shown that in this one, it is replaceable. It does require desoldering and soldering in a new one. There's not a holder in there, which is bizarre, but I guess they don't expect you going in there to repair it. They're not gonna put one in there. And then the Powerhouse 800, which basically is the same design, but just scaled up, has a 500 watt inverter. So I'd imagine that's probably like a 60 amp fuse, or sorry, I don't think they make 60 amp in a single package. So it might be dual 30 amp fuses or something like that. So two 30 amp fuses in parallel. I'll take that one apart soon enough. Now that I've taken this one apart, it kind of satisfied my curiosity of, can I work on these if I need to? And to my level of desire, of wanting to work on these, it comes apart in a way that is not super destructive and doesn't require crazy tools. It's a little fussy and it requires patience because it's not a device that is intended to be user serviceable. It's something that you have to be cognizant of when you're working on it. You just take your time. And anyways, I'm really impressed with the design. I didn't know it had two fans. I thought it just had one fan. And so hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions or anything regarding the Powerhouse 2 400, I'm gonna keep calling that because it's been discontinued, but I don't know what it, it was renamed to just before it was discontinued. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.